Okay. All righty. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Everybody can hear. Okay. All right. Well, happy new year, everyone. Glad to see you on this uh, winter's day. Uh, we've had quite a um, welcome for this year with all the snow just this week. Um, and even though we are getting it um, like this, there are other places actually that are worse off than we are, right? But anyway, just glad to be here. Glad to see everyone tonight. Um, tonight, um, we, uh, Sister Lynn and I had talked for a while about uh, the topics. And uh, as she said, we we're going to continue this year um, in the topic of uh, unshakable. And so um, I was so affected by that that I, I'm, I'm just grateful that we're going to stay on that for a little bit because um, as, a, as a person who counsels, as a person who talks to you know, people just in general, um, I, I find that uh, people really are going through shakable moments. And for us as Christians, we need to know how to balance those things that are happening in our lives that are not great. And uh, the Lord has a word for us in terms of how to deal with those things that cause us um, to feel a little off felt. So for tonight, I'm going to be talking about, um, and I added a word to um, uh, un unshakable faith. I actually want to talk a little bit about how do we develop that unshakable faith? Uh, how do we move um, in this um, walk that we have? And in a way that kind of helps us to get better every time we kind of go through. So we will be talking about developing unshakable faith. Um, our topic or, 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 or primary scripture is Hebrew, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hebrews 11 uh, and verse 1. And I want to thank my baby sister for reading this scripture and praying um and I, i'm just i am so blessed to have her as a sister i don't know how much if she knows how much but i love her and i thank her for who she is amen so we're going to just pray real quickly again and then we'll move forward father we come once again just thank you for this time together i ask lord god that you would uh, minister deeply um, we thank you, Lord God, for those who are on tonight. I know for some people it was a struggle even getting home. Um, I appreciate the fact that they love Sister Lynn, they love this ministry, and that they're eager to hear from you. Lord, I just ask that I don't disappoint um, the things that I've studied. I ask that you would bring back to my remembrance that I might uh, minister to them in a way that causes a uh, change, um, and it causes them to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. So just have your way tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So that particular scripture is very familiar. Um, I'll just read it for your hearing. Uh, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Again, hope. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, and I would like to look at, I think when we, when we share these kinds of uh, words, sometimes we need to know a little bit about what that means. So um, let's look at the same, uh, or like, let's look at some of the key words from, uh, I'm using here the dictionary for Oxford language. And it says, um, first of all, substance, the real physical matter of which a person or thing consists Okay, substance, the real physical matter of which a person or thing consists and which has a tangible and solid presence. For example, you're sitting in a chair or you're sitting on a sofa or wherever you're sitting, that's very tangible. A car is tangible. A hug is tangible. Um, a husband 
and I know some of you don't have a husband, and I'm still praying for that, but a husband is tangible, you can touch it. Um, and then like eating a piece of fruit, that's something that you can actually wrap your lips around. Hope is feeling a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. So um, like we know that when we hope for something, the, the, the hope is or the desire is that that thing that we're so um, asking God for will actually come to pass. And in most cases, we're looking for a desire for a better situation than the one that we have right now. And the evidence, um, when you think about evidence, I really I like a lot of the, the um, detective shows and things like that. And they look for evidence that this criminal did this particular act that they're either searching for this person for or that they're already in some kind of incarceration. So evidence is available body of facts or information indicating um, a belief or a proposition uh, which is true or valid. And in other words, um, I like the old folks would say the proof is in the pudding. Okay, you see it and taste it and, and it's good. Okay, so whatever evidence we're, we're, we're searching for, you wanna make sure that it's good, okay? And the proof is in the pudding when we get it. So as, as we look at un unshakable faith, um, it's predicated on our, our walking by faith and not by sight. That's what Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 tells us. There's an action that takes place when you're walking. And so likewise, as a Christian, there's an action that, they, that takes place. How am I carrying myself? How am I living as a Christian? Do I represent the Lord well? So that when someone looks at me and says, this is a Christian woman, they can actually look at you and see Jesus. Okay, so we wanna have action in what we do. Uh, Pastor Greg Laurie um, is a, uh, one of the, uh, who's raising their hand here? Um, we'll have, uh, if you have a question, just kind of put that aside and we'll, uh, answer a question for you um, at a later uh, time during my talk, okay? So just, just keep your hand ready to go again, but I will answer that question. I want to get back to it, okay? All right, so Pastor Greg Laurie is a person um, who is a, is, a, is a pastor and he has a, he does radio ministry, he does a lot of um, ministry regarding um, uh, uh, really doing a lot of deliverance uh, of people and things like that. But anyway, one, one of the things that he said on um, June the 7th, 2010, was um, that a faith that cannot be shaken is a faith that has already been shaken. So in other words, all of us have gone through something that probably shook us up. Death of a loved one, the loss of a friend, um, a divorce, you know, um, maybe children not doing what we would like to see them do. Those things kind of shook us up a little bit. However, in the process of us getting shaken up, uh, over time, we came to realize that even though I went through this particular experience, God brought me through it. So every one of us on some level has been shaken and every one of us has probably also experienced some healing from that particular circumstance. And so we all have gone through something and we all have experienced something that we did not particularly care for or that God allowed us to go through, but somehow we came through, um, again, proof is in the pudding, we went through it. Okay, it wasn't tasty, but we got something out of it, amen? So when we think about developing shakable faith, when, when you think about developing, um, I, I think about um, 
I remember my son was growing up and everything and he started changing. And I remember the first time um, I went to go in his room and he said to me, mom, you can't come in. You know, because things were changing with him. Likewise, if you have daughters, um, you see that change. Also as an OBGYN social worker, people would come to see me in the clinic and they would be pregnant. And then to see that the growth of their, their abdomen, and then at the end to see the development and the growth of this baby, um, fascinating. So we all are going through some kind of development process, whether you're a believer or not believer, something is happening in you that's changing you and that's developing, developing either something good in you or something bad in you. The scripture says in Proverbs 19, 21, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. There's a lot of things that we learn. There's a lot of things that we maybe even try to do. But when it comes down to it, the counsel of the Lord, his word does not change. Our free dictionary talks about the definition of unshakable as firm, steadfast, unbendable, unfaltering, unwavering, steady, it's stiff, uh, it's resolute and it's firm in purpose and belief, characterized by firmness and determination. So when you think of being unshakable, think of yourself as being steadfast in whatever that situation is. Not to say that you like it or enjoy it. It's not even to say that you haven't had some really difficult feelings about the things that you're going through. But when everything settles, when they say when it does settles, you're still standing. You're still um, standing on the word of God and you're still trusting God for your situation. Also, as you develop Un, unshakable faith. Apostle Paul says, um, in the face of, of death, in, in, in the face of death, face of trials, he says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. First Corinthians. We are supposed to stand firm, okay? be unmovable. And we talked about it during the conference. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Okay, so we know we go through this tipping when we're going through, but somehow we just, we, we bounce back. Okay, and you're going to continue in the Lord. Now, sometimes when we have a little crisis or whatever, I mean, I've been through things myself, we have a tendency maybe to pull back just a little bit from the Lord. And sometimes that's good because it gives us an opportunity to think about, to ruminate on, to, to really look at the experience that you might've gone through that was difficult. What was the benefit of that as opposed to what was the negative? Because if you think of everything that you've ever been through, somehow you benefited. You ever, uh, <laughs> this, this is kind of a gross thought, but um, have you ever had to throw up? I think everybody threw up one time or another. Now, in the process of throwing up, it doesn't feel good, doesn't smell good, it's just a horrible experience. However, if something's in your stomach that's causing you to feel badly, you need to get it out. So sometimes when we go through what we go through, there's something happening inside of us, in our behavior, in our, in our spiritual uh, heart that's going on and sometimes we have to experience what we experience to get that negative out and if if it's not on the table for us to deal with then sometimes it never is dealt with and that's more um, detrimental to you than when you let it out crying is a great thing uh, it's a great cathartic thing because some days it just gets too too difficult and you cry. God meant it for, for us to, to do that because if we held in all the things that cause us pain, 
Again, it causes difficult. You can have heart problems. You can have high blood pressure. Some people get ulcers. All kinds of things can happen when we don't let out our feelings. And so when we're going through these moments and it shakes us up, again, shakeable, but yet resilient and come back from whatever it is that we have experienced. But sometimes we have to have a negative experience in order to get something more positive. And so as Apostle Paul was saying, you know, be unmovable. Don't let it stop you from being a Christian. One of the things I hear a lot is about church hurt. Somebody hurts somebody in the church and they, they shut God out now because they're mad at God, they're mad at everyone else because someone else might have hurt them. And God is saying, always abound in the work of the Lord, no matter what, you know, because your labor in the Lord, the things you're doing for him, you know, that, that's priceless, okay? That's eternal. So we can't allow ourselves to, to all, you know, to get hurt so badly that we forget or we walk away from the Lord um, because someone else hurt us. I didn't do anything to you. He's still there. Okay. Um, so we need to, to just watch that when we're, when we're feeling upset. Okay. Make sure that you keep short accounts with God and with others. Um, sometimes people get angry with God because they prayed about something and he didn't give that to them. And then sometimes when you look back, the things that if we had been given the things that we asked for would have caused a whole lot of damage um, emotionally as well. So God knows us and he knows how much we can bear and he knows what is not good for us that sometimes we don't even know, but he will block that sometimes. So instead of being angry, just trust God to know that he did this for a very good reason. He allowed it for a very good reason. Okay. Developing uh, unshakable faith. So when does this faith or where does this faith come from? Okay, we talk about faith. Where did it come from? Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 talks about, for by grace you are saved through faith. And that wasn't of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works. At least anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay, so by grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, we've been saved. And through faith that he gave us, we're able to do the things that he called us to do in this body of Christ, okay? In this physical body, as a group of Christians together, as a person with a family, all those things that he called us to do for him, he gave us the ability um, to do that. So that's, so that's where the faith came from, the faith to believe that he died on the cross for you. And that if you ask him into your heart, he's going to receive you, he'll forgive you of your sin, and then he'll allow you to walk in this life for him and do for him uh, those things that he already prepared for you a long time ago. That's the beauty of God. He prepared this life for us years ago, thousands of years ago, yeah, you know, before we was it was. Amen. So it, that's the beauty of who he is. And so when you think about um, having faith, then you're like, wow, um, I didn't even have that on my own. God, God gave that to me. The very foundation and essence of our faith comes from that grace. Okay? And it was a free gift. How about that? Somebody gave you a free gift. Um, didn't cost you anything. Uh, and it's eternal. Okay. And we just had Christmas. And most of the stuff we got either did, we didn't like it <laughs> or it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, dissipate, you know, or whatever. So, but, but faith that God gave us and it's Christian life, he did. That's something that's eternal, and, and we're going to love that forever. Amen. All right. Um, the other thing, developing uh, unshakable faith. How much faith does it require? 
And do I have to, you know, do I have to walk around looking like um, the rock, you know, or, or do I have to have muscles? Do I have, do I have to look big? Uh, does it require a lot from me to have faith? And the Bible says, no, how much faith does it require? Mustard seed faith. I don't know if you've ever seen the mustard seed. You can barely see it. It really is a very tiny uh, uh, little seed. And the scripture tells us in uh, Matthew 17, 20, he said to them, because of your little faith, truly I say to you, if you have faith like, grain, like a grain of mustard, or a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. And a lot of people say, well, go out, can he really move a mountain? Well, yeah, look around. He's able to do that. But when in, in our situation, sometimes it feels like a mountain. It feels like a ton of bricks on us when we're going through something difficult. Or even when he's called you, for whatever ministry he's called to. And ministry doesn't just mean pulpit ministry. Um, we have ushers, we have uh, readers on here. Uh, we have people over um, the prayer ministry, missions, all those ministries are relevant. And all those ministries are things that sometimes cause us to feel very heavy. And in the process of how God is using us, um, it feels difficult, and we still need that little bit of faith to know that if God called you to do this particular thing, on the usher, I'm sure the ushers on those days when you've got those people that are acting crazy, don't want to, you know, don't want to take direction, that has to really be good. Okay, even with the greeters, some people are not nice, and you're smiling, you're saying good morning, and they don't act like they are happy to be here. Okay. Um, and uh, even on when people go out to, for missions, you know, our purpose is to, to really give some, give the message that I love you and more than that, God loves you. So you have something that you need, I give it to you. However, that comes out. But there are times you can find some people who aren't very lovable and you may not want to give it, but you do because you have that unshakable faith and belief that God has a purpose for whatever he's doing for you. Or, and how he's using you uh, to, to carry out his will. Okay. Okay, so, so the thing that you want to remember when you're thinking about faith um, that is unseen, okay, there's something that you can't feel necessarily, you can't touch it necessarily, but we walk by sight. We got, with faith, not, not, not by um, sight, but by faith, okay? So you're not always going to see it uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. So you're not always going to see what faith looks like, but you should have some remnant of that that will let you know, okay, um, I see, I see uh, something down the street and I know I have to get to it, but I have to go past, say, say you got to go past the dog on the block that, uh, that barks every time anybody walks by and you know it's this big dog and you're scared to death of a dog but faith says I can walk by this dog um, and I can't see the end maybe of that street because I'm so busy staring at this dog right here but in the end if you just keep walking keep looking ahead um, then you'll be able to to walk past in in a way that you know that God got you through whatever that difficult was. And you did that, again, by faith, not by sight, not by knowing exactly what the end was going to be. But he took you through that. And I used to laugh, there was a song that said, there's a blessing on the other side of through. And sometimes we just got to walk through. Got to let him take us through whatever it is that we're going through so that our faith will be um, stronger and more stable because We've experienced um, and that experience of faith on uh, the faith walk that I just took. The other thing that you want to look at is hindrances. What are some of the things that cause us not to be so faithful um, and, and, and a little bit unstable? 
what uh what what one of the things that i that i came across was um a lack of understanding the nature of god a lot of us don't even know who he really is and i'm gonna say even when we were going through our ordination training i thought i knew who god was i thought i knew god in the you know i mean him was tight and we are but i learned so many new things about who god is okay so we need to have a good understanding of who our God is. Uh, Malachi 3.6, uh, John 4.24, they talk about this understanding the nature. Um, a lack of understanding our salvation, Acts 4 and 12. You, <laughs> we gotta understand what, what, how we got saved, again, not by yourself, uh, what that actually means in terms of uh, how I carry myself, how how it looked before time, how it looks after time. And this really class that some of y'all are going to be taking, you're going to learn a lot of that. But we got to understand what our salvation did for us. And the main thing is saved us from sin so that we could be saved for eternity. And as Jesus died on that cross um, and to save us, past, present, and future sin. I love that, past, present, and future sin. We are hot messes, most of us, most of the time. <laughs> but that he saved us from my past stuff, and I know how crazy that was. How today, every day, when I get out of bed and sometimes don't feel Christian, he saved me from that. And then he saved me from stuff that I don't even know is going to happen. So, I mean, that that's just awesome. You know, so when you think about those things, that should give you some kind of joy and give you um, moxie to stand up and say, ooh, you know, I really appreciate this. And, and I am going to not be so shakable today. I'm not going to let every little thing cause me um, to, to lose my mind, to snap at someone, you know, to, to just want to get in the bed and cup your head. Uh, we fear man sometimes more than we fear God. Okay, Proverbs 9 and 10, Psalms 118 and 6. Talk. We fear man in our circumstances more than God. We all upset because you know who is running for president. He's a man. Okay, and doesn't doesn't mean that he can't cause some havoc, but we serve a God that is mighty, that is awesome, and he's going to take care of us. Okay, when we went through COVID, some and we lost loved ones and everything. Some people did go home, you know, whether you know, to, hopefully to be with the Lord. But we got through it. And God will take us through whatever it is that we're going through so that we can, again, be unshakable, okay? Um, a lack of intimacy with God, James 4 and 8. Some, some of us don't, don't ever take time to sit down and read his word, to talk to him. Um, if you're living in a house with a husband or a wife, and they never talk to you, that's not being very intimate. That's not really taking some time to know one another. Because a lot of times we think of intimacy as, as a sexual thing. No, how about just knowing what is the desire of that person's heart? What about knowing what they what their likes and their dislikes are? You know, what about just taking some time to say thank you? You know, I love you, I appreciate you all that intimacy and and we don't do that sometimes because we're too busy doing other things some people you know we'd rather watch television i love i love some certain tv shows and stuff like that but i make sure that i have my time um, with the lord and he wants to hear from me and i want to hear from him so when you're doing your devotion whatever you should be doing devotion what time of day that's your decision for me, I like to get out of, before I get out of that bed, close to getting out of that bed, 
I want to make sure that I'm talking to the Lord. I'm reading what he has for me to say or think that day. I ask him, what is it you want me to do today? You know, I tell him I love him. And I even tell him, I appreciate that you put up with me. That's intimacy. <laughs> intimacy is just, I know you, you know me. Okay, you should know God well enough to know that he cares for you, that he wants to have a relationship with you. Yeah, you, okay? Not the person next door, um, not Bishop Reed. He wants to know you personally, okay? And the only way to get to do that is to open that word and read it and talk to him and spend some time. You know, if you really sit still long enough, he will talk back to you when you say your prayers. We, we pray and then we get up, we run, sit still, he'll hear you. Um, I was away visiting my family, my, my grands and my son, and uh, we went to church, I went to my grandson's church. And it was so crazy because when they did something similar to what we do, which is a, um, uh, on Good Friday, we do the seven last words and you have a different person sharing each word. So for Christmas, they actually had different people sharing um, a word. Um, and there were seven of them, and they only had seven minutes. We thought 10 to 12 minutes, we thought that was crazy. And we lasted for seven minutes. And amazingly, they did it in seven minutes. The beauty of that, every time someone got up to speak, I don't know what was, I don't know, I don't think this ever happened to me, and it's not spooky, but I was writing before each person got up. And, and every time they got up, there was something that they said that I had already written down. Because I had had my devotions that day, I was all ready to hear what God had to say to me. And each one of them spoke to me individually, something that I had already written on a piece of paper. Okay, he talks to you, he lets you know that he hears you, he understands what you're going through, and he wants to help us to be unshakable during those times, again, when things are like a little rocky, and, and sometimes you, you don't see, because faith you don't see, you have to believe, okay? So we have to get that intimate with the Lord. Other hindrances, lack of contentment, First Timothy 6, and uh, godliness with our contentment. You, you need some, you need to have contentment to God. You need to know that whatever you're going through, whatever you're thinking about, uh, whatever it is that you desire, God wants to see you content, first of all, with what you have. A lot of times we want all this. We want more of everything. And you haven't even done with what you need to do with what you had. Um, I really talked to singles about this. Everybody wants to be married. And I did. I mean, I was married, um, I can't even say, 40 something years ago. I've been by myself 35, 36 years. And I, when I grew up, I wanted to be married. Okay. And I got married. And it didn't last because I, I chose this person I got. Okay. But some of us want to be married just for the sake of being married. You have no, no clue what, what that really looks like and what it should look like. So learn to be content first as a single and then ask God to show you, first of all, if that's what he desires for you. And, and if he desires that for you, you know, be content in the state that you're in until somebody, God sent someone. And he says, that it's the man to find the wife, okay? We, and it's not to say that you don't, you're not attracted to people and or um, you even let someone know that you kind of like them or whatever, but don't go, don't, don't go on a man hunt, please, because you won't come back, really, okay? Make sure that you don't <laughs> let the Lord bring that person to you, okay? That's just a side point. <laughs> Um, double-mindedness. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You know, one minute you, one minute you want to, um, um, you know, you want to uh, be a doctor, 
Next minute, you're going to have your lawyer. Uh, next minute, uh, you know, you want to go uh, around the world in 80 days. You make a decision, but you don't stick to the decision that you made. That's double-mindedness. Some of you are double-minded about God. Okay. I mean, love him and, you, and all that kind of stuff. But when something happens, he's the first person we drop kick. Because we are so afraid um, of not being sometimes in control that you're so out of control. So double-mindedness, that's not a good thing. Okay, you need to be, you need to have the mind of Christ. Okay, um, and, and not go up and down, up and down. Some days I love Jesus, some days I don't. Yeah, uh, because he is, he's a state, he's probably the most stable thing in your life. You just have to let him do that. Um, lack of a prayer life, Philippians 4, 5, and 6 talk. You know, here's, the, here's the problem I think. A lot of times, everybody thinks that they have to pray for an hour. Everybody thinks they have to be loud when they pray. Everybody thinks that they have to, you know, uh, you know, give the whole scripture while you're praying. Prayer is simple. And, and I think that's part of it. You know, some of us are so um, caught up in how long, how loud, how many times a week, and how, if pray without ceasing, you get up in the morning, you can pray in your head, you can pray in your car. Like I said, pray in your car, keep your eyes open, please, okay? But pray, you know, you wanna pray without ceasing. You wanna pray honestly. You wanna be confessing your sin daily, okay? Get into the habit of praying. Start out with a couple of minutes, just get up in the morning. Let the Lord know. It's, and there's some days you can't even pray. You just have to moan. It's that, it's that bad. Okay? But you need to be praying. Because God hears your prayer. And he will respond. He'll talk back to you. If you sit still long enough, to let him do that. Okay? Um, don't, don't, show, don't try to show off with your prayer. You know? And he even tells us, you know, don't be, don't be this person. So he wants to stand on the street corner, you know, with this repetitious prayer. Okay. Pray without ceasing. Give him your full attention. And if it's just Lord help. I tell my grandkids all the time, if you're somewhere and you're in a situation that's scary and something is telling you this is not a good situation, I, tell, I don't even say don't say, don't get, you don't have to say Lord, just say help. Lord help, and the Lord will come to your aid. And so I really, you know, want you to understand. You don't have to pray long. You don't have to get all um, encyclopedia Greek and all that stuff. Just pray. Let Him do what He's going to do. Okay. So that that's one hindrance. Not enough time in the Word. Um, one of my 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 life verse Matthew six thirty thirty three. Seek first the kingdom of God and His way. Make sure that you are taking some time to read his word. They're his instructions. You want to know what to do? Get in the word. That Bible has a, a answer for everything. That's why I love biblical counsel. He has an answer for whatever ails you. You just have to, you just have to be willing to go through that Bible and, and find it and see his face, his face. Listen to what he said. We are so busy going to other people for counsel. And folks that are going to lead you wrong. You know, I'm going to say it like that. You know that Negro is not the person God told you to hang out with. Okay. But you have some girlfriend that will tell you, well, he's cute. Cute don't get it. Cute doesn't last long. Okay. You want somebody that's standing on the word of God and he's firmly planted. Okay, that's who you want. So make sure that you, if you look for a husband, go to the word, ask them. Boaz is one of, one of the best examples ever. And I told y'all, I think I told y'all the, the story about my Boaz man. I was, um, I was visiting a friend and she had a pastor friend 
her and her husband invited him to dinner and he took a liking to me, which I wasn't aware of. So I get this call from him and he asked me to marry him. Well, I just met the man, okay? And so some the perfect example. I had friends say, well, he's got money. He's this and he's that and all this other stuff that they were telling me, why not marry this person? I said, I don't, first of all, I don't know him, okay? Secondly, Lord did not tell me this is this is my Boaz. Not only that, he was probably about 30 years older than me. So I said, God, you have a sense of humor. I always ask you for a Boaz man, but that was a whole nother thing. <laughs> Amen. So that's that, you know, make sure that um, when you are seeking guidance as a Christian, you want some godly guidance. And I'm not saying, I'm a, I was a, a secular social worker. I'm not saying that secular counseling does not help. I'm just saying it. As a Christian, your first go-to is to the word of God, man, and let him do what he's going to do. So that's one of the hindrances, too. We don't know the word for ourselves, and we don't go to it. Almost done. Um, uh, lack of spending time, uh, like I said, in the word. We don't want to, we don't want to suffer. Romans 8 and 18 talks about, and Peter talks about suffering. All of us are going to suffer something, a bad tooth an earache, something. But when it comes to being a Christian, um, we're, and, and as you look around, we're getting closer and closer to Christ's coming. And we are probably going to be challenged more than ever as Christians. And that may mean sometimes uh, maybe not getting a job. It may even mean sometimes you may have to leave a job because of your faith. Um, there's going to be things that you're going to be challenged about, um, and people aren't going to always like you, okay, um, especially when they know that you're a Christian. But we may suffer because of that, but we're not going to lose anything because in the end, we have eternity with Christ, and that little bit of whatever we might have lost uh, doesn't matter. I've heard, I've had, had and heard people who lost a job um, because maybe they just were too goody two shoes that they wouldn't get involved in some of the things that go on at work and all that kind of stuff. And they might have lost a job. But the next job that they got was better. So God was all up in there. So when we do what he tells us to do, God is going to be faithful enough to, to do for us that thing that we need, even if we die. I, I'm, I'm, the, the older I get to that possibility, and because of my age, I, I'm really appreciating the fact that if I leave here, wherever I'm going, it's going to be better, you know. And I love I love my family, and I, and I want to be around long enough to see some of these other people grow up to be some other ages. But the reality is, if I go where I'm going, it's going to be better than where I am. So that's that's a, another thing. But we have to get to that point where we realize everybody gonna like ain't gonna like because you're. Um, uh, a lack of uh, total surrender. Some of us got saved, but we hold, we got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And we're still straddling. Okay. That's just not a good position to be in. Either you are in or you're out. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not a believer because all of us had to grow up. There were a lot of things that most of us, when we came to Christ, we were still doing. And he took those things away from us, um, especially if we asked him to. But there were some other things that he just took away. And so we have to get to that place in James 4 and 7, Romans 12, uh, 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We're new creatures. We can't live in both worlds. We have to make a decision which world we're going to be in. And as a believer who is carnal or somebody who's still really loves the world a lot um you're just not being faithful to the god who who saved you and you need to be mindful of that and be willing to let go and do what god says which is surrender you know, give give him those things you know, we want to give him our peanut butter and jelly sandwich when he told us give him give up that steak you know you're going to have a heart attack <laughs> eating all that stuff he, he wants us to give the thing that he wants from us, not just what we want to give him. 
Okay, and then and we have our pet sins, and sometimes those are the ones that take too long. All right, lack of fellowship with mature saints. Uh, Hebrews 10, uh, 24, 25 talks about don't forsake the assembly of yourselves. Um, I love when I came to Sharon and I had uh, seniors like Mom Reed, um, uh, uh, sister, uh, what's her name? Um, I can't, I can't, to Sister Ruby. Those people, um, and, and Mom Carrington, who was now 99 years of age, those were precious people to have in my life because I didn't have grandparents. Um, and then my mom was sick, so she couldn't even really be for me like I needed her to be for me at the time. Coming into Sharon, you know, coming out of the world, they were so precious and so um, um, uh, forgiving and just so kind to me. Um, coming to church, I know COVID and all this stuff that's going on, like, we gotta be mindful of all of that. But I don't know about you, but I loved, when it, I loved it when they said we come back to church. We had church at home, we did. But it's nothing like being in fellowship. And so we don't need to forsake ourselves from each other because when you get there, you know, you get blessed, you get encouraged. They say you might have had one of them shakable weeks, but when you come to church and somebody hugged you, you know, I, when I first came here, I said, this is the hugginest place I ever been. And I was looking because I, we didn't get hugs in my house. So it was something different for me, but coming and not forsaking yourself uh, that from that assembly is just such a blessing that will help you stand. And when you're going through a bad day or whatever, somebody uh, might just give you a peppermint and you, you know, a cough drop, something, you needed that. Okay. So it's really a blessing to be in the company of, of, of other believers. Okay. Um, how, how do now, so, so how do we develop this faith that we're talking about? Acknowledge, first of all, your lack of it. And also acknowledge that God gave you some, okay? Um, confess your sin, First John 1, 9. When you messing up, when you feel out of sorts and stuff like that, most of the time it's you, okay? It's like, not that you haven't had experiences that were negative, but you have to learn how to, how to work through that and not allow that to take you um, away from the Lord or cause you to be so depressed that you can't function, okay? He never meant for you to feel that way. He never meant for you to stay there. We all have those moments, but don't stay there. And when you mess up, confess it right away. You know, he said he's faithful and just, he will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Sometimes we beat ourselves up more than God, and sometimes we live, we live in that mess for so long, even though you feel bad about it, that you end up getting sick, okay? So let go of it. You know, tell him about it, confess it, and then repent. Repent means turn away from it. So you can't just say, well, I, I did, I fornicated, and I'm sorry. Are you really sorry? Okay, so the next time you have that opportunity, Make, let, let, um, like Pastor, I think it's Pastor Lambert that said that. When Satan comes knocking, send your big brother Jesus to the door. Because you may not be able to handle that yourself, but send Jesus to the door. But you got to have some Jesus in you to be able to pull that up and say, look, nope, not doing that today. Okay? Um, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Okay? You got to have some faith in order to please God. Okay? And what he's saying, I gave you faith. And even if it's mustard seed side, you need to deal with that. Okay? You can use that. Okay. Um, the other thing in developing, um, learn to be patient and wait on the Lord. In Psalm 46.10, be still, know I'm God. Sometimes we are so impatient, we jump ahead of him, and that's how we mess up. That's why you end up weeble wobble. Okay, give him time when you prayed and asked for something. Uh, don't go out and get alone when he didn't tell you to get alone. Okay, sometimes I've had I've, I've had so many opportunities, especially in this last year, when some, I needed something 
And, uh, and as a matter of fact, right after the ordination, um, uh, and I was getting ready to get saving to, to go see my kids and stuff like that. It was just like my car decided to die one day um, when I came to church and uh, my sister was in the car with us, with me. And as we were trying to decide, I was trying to decide what to do. Um, I was on Lincoln Drive and I used to take Mount Pleasant. I ordinarily go up that hill. But the Lord told me don't go up that hill that day. And I listened and I, I was able to coach and put my car right in the parking space until AAA was able to come get. And my car is like 20 years old and everybody's like, you know, you need a new car. But it's a Toyota and it doesn't have a lot of miles on it. It's still working. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I knew that it, I, I said, this, this might be it. I might actually have to go get a car this time. <laughs> but somebody gave me money that I was able to go and get the car fixed. And it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I said, if it's, if it's over $1,000, it's just going to have to go. It's going to the grave. It's going to the grave. But it, that didn't happen. So we have to be patient sometimes. Because uh, somebody said, well, you know, you can go get a loan. I, I know I can get a loan, but I'm not getting a loan for that. Let me just wait and see what happens. If I'm going to get a loan, it's going to be for But at the same time, I said, well, God, you know, I don't really want to be in debt like that yet. So he he did he made it possible. So we gotta wait on him. Don't jump ahead of him uh, sometimes on the things that we're asking. Just be still, sit, listen. Uh, he will tell you, he will give you the exact direction that you need in terms of that. So as we look at, as we're closing, look at um, when we look at um surrendering our will and putting our total dependence on God. Um, the thing that keeps coming to mind, let, the mind, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. He thought it not robbery to come here. He thought it not robbery to give his life um, for us. So when we're thinking about Christ and how he did that for us, we need to think also about um, standing firm on what we know and representing Christ um, here on earth right now there are so many people that don't know christ it's, it's just heartbreaking and when people die you know i'm always asking was, was this person a believer and it's sad when that person either says i don't know or uh, he definitely wasn't and all of that so we have a responsibility not to be shakable so shakable that we forget what our what God has called us um, as individuals to do, which is to stand on the word, which is to share the word, which is to draw others to himself. And so um, that um, as we're thinking about this, a life in Christ will never be easy, but it will be rewarding. Think about all the rewards. Like I said, if nothing else, you met people that you probably would have never met before. I know I've been places that I never thought I would ever get to. You know, seeing my own family members come to Christ. There are all kinds of rewards and the greatest one, of course, is eternity. So we do not have to go it alone, okay? Uh, it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we're able to carry out the plans that God has for our lives and our daily walk with him. And he, if you look at Hebrews, Zechariah 4, 6, 2, not by power or by might, but by your spirit, that's the Lord God of hope. And then women in the Bible, like Ruth, Naomi, Esther, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, all experienced hardships and disappointments and pain, but because they put their trust in the only one who could keep and care and comfort them and save them, they developed unshakable. So as we go, go to this end of this, um, just remember, uh, Abraham believed God and he counted it for righteousness. Um, Genesis 15, says, do you, do you believe God? Do you believe who he says he is, what he's done? Have you seen it happen in your life enough for you to have enough faith as a mustard seed to be able to say, God's got this, okay? There's a 
hymn that I used to really love um, back in the day. And it's at, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Isaac Watts uh, wrote that song. And so unshakable faith is developed and made possible by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, who died at Calvary, has risen again. He's waiting for us right now um, for that day. He either comes back to get us when we pass away and gets to, to spend time with us. Um, so allow the Holy Spirit uh, to lead you, to guide you, to direct you, that your faith will sustain you, no matter what the trial or the test. Now, answer, now I'm going to, just, just to close out, we say this at, at service, but I think it's really relevant. Unto him, now unto him is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, not just a little bit, exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior, be glory, honor, dominion, and power, both now and even forevermore, amen. We can, we are constantly developing in our faith and God wants us to be unshakable, amen? And we can do it.